I never thought I'd find myself here, deep beneath the rusty surface of Mars, surrounded by ancient alien mysteries and the constant hum of life support systems. My name is Dr. Elena Reeves, and I'm the lead archaeologist on the Ares 7 expedition. We came to study the recently discovered Martian catacombs, but what we've found defies explanation and threatens our very sanity. The descent into the catacombs was challenging, even with our advanced gear. The narrow passages seemed to shift and twist, playing tricks on our perception. As we moved deeper, the walls began to change. What once looked like natural rock formations gradually gave way to smooth, black surfaces etched with glyphs unlike anything in our database. Dr. Reeves, you need to see this called out Dr. Chen, our xenolinguist. His voice echoed unnaturally in the cavernous space. I made my way over, my headlamp barely piercing the oppressive darkness. Chen's gloved hand traced a series of intricate symbols. These patterns, they're not static. They're changing, ever so slightly, as if they're alive. I leaned in closer my breath fogging the inside of my helmet. He was right. The glyphs seemed to writhe and pulse, defying the laws of physics. A chill ran down my spine, despite the temperature-controlled suit. Log everything, I ordered, trying to keep my voice steady. We need to document every detail. As days passed, we pushed further into the labyrinth. The catacombs seemed endless, a maze of interconnected chambers and tunnels that defied our mapping systems. Strange artifacts littered our path objects that seemed to absorb light, geometries that hurt to look at directly, and worst of all, the whispers. It started as a low hum, barely perceptible through our suits. But as we ventured deeper, it grew louder, more insistent. At first, we dismissed it as interference or the sounds of shifting rock. But then we began to make out words alien languages that shouldn't exist, mixed with snippets of Earth languages long dead. It's getting into my head, muttered Santiago, our geologist, his eyes wild behind his faceplate. Make it stop, please, make it stop. I watched helplessly as he clawed at his helmet his movements becoming more frantic. We had to sedate him and send him back to the surface. Three more crew members followed in the next week, leaving just myself, Chin, and our exobiologist, Dr. Yuki Tanaka. We should leave, Tanaka said, her voice barely above a whisper. This place, it's not meant for us. We're disturbing something ancient and powerful. I knew she was right, but I couldn't bring myself to give the order. We were on the verge of the greatest discovery in human history. The secrets of an alien civilization were within our grasp. How could we turn back now? Our breakthrough came in what we dubbed the Central Chamber. It was a vast cavern easily the size of a football stadium, with a ceiling so high our lights couldn't reach it. In the center stood a monolithic structure, a twisting spire of that same black, light-absorbing material we'd encountered throughout the catacombs. It's a beacon, Chin breathed, his eyes wide with a mixture of awe and fear. Or maybe a lock. These glyphs, their instructions, a warning, and an invitation all at once. As we approached the monolith, the whispers grew to a crescendo. The air itself seemed to vibrate with otherworldly energy. I reached out, my hand hovering inches from the surface of the spire. Elena, don't. Tanaka cried out, but it was too late. The moment my gloved fingers brushed against the monolith, a surge of alien knowledge flooded my mind. Visions of impossible cities, creatures beyond description, and cosmic horrors that dwarfed our understanding of the universe overwhelmed me. 
I screamed, the sound lost in the cacophony of alien whispers that now filled the chamber. The ground beneath us began to shake, and cracks appeared in the walls. Something was awakening, something that had slumbered for eons beneath the Martian surface. We need to leave, now. I shouted, stumbling back from the monolith. Chen and Tanaka didn't need to be told twice. We ran, our headlamps bouncing wildly off the shifting walls of the catacombs. The passages we had so carefully mapped seemed to rearrange themselves as we fled. More than once, we found ourselves in chambers we'd never seen before, filled with technologies that defied our understanding of physics. The exit should be here. Tanaka cried out in frustration as we hit another dead end. The shaking had intensified, and now a low, atonal hum filled the air, making it hard to think. Chin grabbed my arm, his eyes wide with terror. Listen, he said, his voice barely audible over the noise. Can you hear it? They're coming. I strained my ears. And that's when I heard it a sound that will haunt me for the rest of my days. It was the sound of massive, inhuman footsteps echoing through the catacombs, growing closer with each passing second. Run! I screamed, pushing my companions forward. We sprinted through the twisting corridors, the alien whispers now a deafening roar in our minds. The walls themselves seemed to pulse and breathe, as if the entire complex was coming to life around us. As we rounded a corner, I caught a glimpse of something moving in the shadows behind us. It was massive, its form shifting and changing in ways that hurt to look at directly. Tentacles of living darkness reached out, grasping at the air mere feet from where we stood. There! Chin shouted, pointing to a narrow crevice in the wall ahead. It wasn't on any of our maps, but at this point, we had no choice. We squeezed through the opening, the sound of crumbling rock and alien shrieks following close behind. The passage led us to a small chamber unlike any we'd seen before. The walls here were covered in what looked like circuitry, pulsing with an eerie blue light. In the center of the room stood a cylindrical device its surface etched with the same shifting glyphs we'd encountered throughout the catacombs. What is it? Tanaka asked, her voice trembling. Before I could answer, the device sprang to life. A holographic display filled the air around us, showing images of Mars, but not the Mars we knew. We saw oceans, sprawling cities, and creatures that defied description walking its surface. It's a historical record, Chen whispered in awe. The history of Mars before, before whatever happened to make it what it is now. The images shifted, showing a great cataclysm wars fought with weapons beyond our comprehension, the planet's surface boiling away, and the survivors retreating deep underground. The final image showed the catacombs being sealed, with a warning that chilled me to the bone. We need to seal this place again, I said, the realization hitting me like a physical blow. We've awakened something that was meant to stay buried. As if in response to my words, the chamber began to shake violently. The holographic display flickered and died, plunging us into darkness broken only by our headlamps and the pulsing circuitry on the walls. How? Tanaka cried out panic evident in her voice. We don't even know how to get out of here. I looked at the cylindrical device, a crazy idea forming in my mind. Maybe we don't need to find the way out, I said, reaching for the alien technology. Maybe we can make our own way. As my hands touched the device, another surge of alien knowledge flooded my mind. I saw glimpses of other worlds, other dimensions, paths through space and time that shouldn't exist. My fingers moved of their own accord, inputting a sequence I didn't understand but somehow knew was right. 
the air around us began to shimmer and distort. The walls of the chamber seemed to melt away, replaced by a swirling vortex of colors and shapes that defied description. What's happening? Chin shouted over the din. I grabbed their hands, pulling them close. I don't know, I admitted, but it's our only chance. Whatever happens, we stay together. As the vortex enveloped us, I caught one last glimpse of the chamber. A massive, tentacled form was squeezing through the narrow entrance, its countless eyes fixed on us with alien hunger. Then everything went white, and I felt myself falling through impossible space. I don't know where we'll end up, or what horrors we've unleashed upon the universe. All I know is that our journey into the Martian catacombs was just the beginning. Whatever happens next, one thing is certain the secrets we uncovered on Mars were never meant for human eyes, and the price of our curiosity may be higher than we could ever have imagined. The blinding white light faded, and I found myself gasping for air, my suit's alarms blaring in my ears. We had materialized in what appeared to be another chamber, but this one was vastly different from anything we'd seen in the Martian catacombs. Chen? Tanaka? I called out, my voice shaky. To my relief, I heard their groans nearby. I'm here, Chen responded, his voice weak. Where, where are we? As our vision adjusted, the horror of our new surroundings became apparent. We were in a massive cavern, but the walls were wrong. They pulsed and shifted like living tissue, veins of bioluminescent fluid running through them. The air was thick and humid, completely unlike the dry Martian atmosphere we'd left behind. This isn't Mars, Tanaka whispered, her voice filled with dread. We're somewhere else. I checked my suit's readings but they were going haywire, unable to make sense of our environment. The gravity felt slightly stronger than Mars, but not as heavy as Earth. The air was breathable, according to my sensors, but I wasn't about to risk taking off my helmet. We stood up on shaky legs, our headlamps illuminating the bizarre landscape around us. In the distance, I could see what looked like structures towering spires that twisted and bent in ways that hurt to look at directly. We need to find a way back, I said, trying to keep my voice steady. There has to be another device like the one that brought us here. As we started to move, I noticed something that made my blood run cold. Our footsteps left glowing imprints on the fleshy ground, and those imprints were slowly moving following us. Don't look back, I hissed to the others. Just keep moving. We made our way towards the alien cityscape, each step filling me with growing dread. The whispers that had plagued us in the Martian catacombs were back, but they were different now, clearer, more insistent. I could almost understand them, and that terrified me more than anything. As we got closer to the structures, we saw movement. Shapes that defied description flitted between the twisted spires. Some seemed to phase in and out of existence, while others moved in ways that shouldn't be possible. Dr. Reeves, Chin said, his voice trembling. I think... I think they know we're here. No sooner had he spoken than a piercing shriek filled the air. It was a sound that resonated not just in our ears, but in our very minds. We clutched our heads in pain, falling to our knees. When I looked up, I saw them. Creatures that my mind couldn't fully process, their forms shifting and changing as I tried to focus on them. They had too many limbs, too many eyes, and moved with a fluidity that was both beautiful and terrifying. Run. I screamed, scrambling to my feet. We bolted towards the nearest structure, hoping to find some kind of shelter. As we ran, the ground beneath us began to undulate, 
as if trying to trip us up. Tendrils of living matter reached out from the walls, grasping at our suits. I could hear Tanaka sobbing in terror as we narrowly dodged the alien appendages. We reached the base of one of the twisted spires and found an opening. Without hesitation, we dove inside. The interior was no less alien than the outside, with corridors that seemed to shift and change as we moved through them. We need to find another device, I panted, trying to catch my breath. Something like what brought us here. We pushed deeper into the structure, our headlamps casting eerie shadows on the walls. Every so often, we'd catch glimpses of movement in our peripheral vision, but nothing ever materialized when we looked directly at it. After what felt like hours of wandering, we entered a vast chamber. In the center stood a familiar sight, a cylindrical device similar to the one we'd activated on Mars. But this one was larger, and it pulsed with an otherworldly energy that made the air around it shimmer. That's it, I said, moving towards the device. That's our way out. But as we approached, a figure materialized before us. It was vaguely humanoid but its body was composed of swirling energy and shifting geometric patterns. When it spoke, it wasn't with words, but with thoughts that appeared directly in our minds. You do not belong here, it communicated. Your presence disrupts the balance. We didn't mean to come here, I responded, both out loud and in my thoughts. We we're trying to get back to our world. The entity's form flickered, and I felt a wave of alien emotions wash over me, curiosity, concern, and something akin to pity. Your world, it replied. You have no idea what you've set in motion. The barriers between realities are fragile. Your meddling has created cracks. Images flooded my mind, glimpses of other worlds, other dimensions all bleeding into each other. I saw Earth, but changed, twisted by the influence of realities that should never have touched it. No, I gasped, falling to my knees. We didn't know. We were just exploring. Ignorance does not absolve you, the entity responded. The damage is done. But perhaps, perhaps it can be contained. The entity moved towards the cylindrical device, its form seeming to merge with the alien technology. The air around us began to crackle with energy. You will return, the entity communicated. But you cannot unknow what you have learned. You cannot unsee what you have witnessed. Wait! I cried out. What about the things we awoke on Mars? The horrors in the catacombs? A sense of grim amusement emanated from the entity. They are awake now, yes. But they are as trapped as they have always been. It is not them you should fear. Before I could ask what it meant, the chamber was filled with blinding light. I felt myself being torn apart and reassembled, my consciousness stretched across impossible distances. When the light faded, we were back in the Martian catacombs, in the same chamber where our journey had begun. The cylindrical device was dark and silent. Are we, are we back? Tanaka asked, her voice shaky. I checked my suit's readings. Everything seemed normal or as normal as it could be deep beneath the Martian surface. I think so, I replied but the relief I expected to feel didn't come. As we made our way back to the surface, I couldn't shake the feeling that something had fundamentally changed. The Martian landscape, once red and barren, seemed to shimmer at the edges of my vision. In the shadows, I caught glimpses of impossible geometries and shifting forms. We reached our base camp, where the rest of our team greeted us with a mixture of relief and confusion. 
We had been gone for weeks, they told us, long after they had given us up for dead. As I sat in debriefing, trying to explain what had happened to increasingly skeptical mission controllers back on Earth, I realized the true horror of our situation. We had brought something back with us, not a physical entity, but a knowledge, an awareness of realities beyond our own. I looked at Chen and Tanaka, and I saw in their eyes the same haunted understanding. We were changed, irrevocably. The universe we thought we knew was just a tiny fragment of a larger, more terrifying whole. As I lay in my bunk that night, staring at the ceiling of the Mars hab, I heard it again the whispers. But now, I could understand them. They spoke of ancient secrets, of cosmic horrors, and of a universe far more vast and terrifying than humanity had ever imagined. I closed my eyes, but sleep wouldn't come. I knew it never would, not really. For in the darkness behind my eyelids, I saw them the shapes between worlds, the entities that exist in the cracks of reality. And I knew, with a certainty that chilled me to my core, that they saw me too. Our expedition into the Martian catacombs was over, but a new, more terrifying journey had just begun. We had opened a door that could never truly be closed, and the horrors we had glimpsed were now a part of us. As I lay there, listening to the howling Martian wind outside, I wondered how long it would be before the rest of humanity realized the true cost of our discovery. The Martian catacombs had changed us, marked us. And as I drifted into a fitful, nightmare-plagued sleep, I couldn't help but wonder what would happen when we brought those changes back to Earth.